The 2020 Hyundai Palisade is legitimately a luxury vehicle with the Hyundai badge. I have been waiting a long time to review the Hyundai Palisade. We had the Kia Telluride last summer and it really impressed me. Now I'm gonna tell you everything I think about this Hyundai Palisade, go over all the exterior features, take a deep dive on the inside and go for a test drive. And at the very end, I'm gonna tell you whether I would take this or the Telluride. So be sure to stick around, let's get started. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in for this 2020 Hyundai Palisade review. This is going to be detailed with all sorts of information on the SE, SEL, and Limited trim, which is what we have right here. The SEL still gives you a ton of different options available though. Now I already have a full detailed review of the Kia Telluride uh, with lots of information if you want to check that out. So this will be all about this Hyundai Palisade. So starting right up front, one of my favorite things about the Palisade is just the, the one giant LED daytime running light that we get right here. It really stands out. It runs the full length of the headlight housing, the top and the bottom. It gives it a really premium look. That long daytime running light is standard on every trim. You'll also see the blinker up here and I like how it's separate from the actual daytime running light. It looks really nice and that marker light. And as we come below, the actual headlights are down here. The low beam is on top and the high beam is actually below. And uh, these are full LED headlights. Uh, the SE and SEL give you halogen projector bulbs though. And at night, I have a night video showing these. They also do a really nice job, but they're not adaptive or anything fancy like that. One thing you'll notice is there are no fog lights on the Palisade, but these headlights do good enough to where you really probably won't miss them. And as we take a look at the grill, the grill's gonna differ, differ a little bit. The SE is gonna be plain, then you'll get satin chrome accents on the SEL. And then we have this premium grill on the Limited. It's definitely a big, bold grill. It's kind of like a huge nose on the front of the Palisade. And some of that even carries down below where that radar is for our radar cruise. One difference on these trims is this Limited trim gives us that chrome piece, that chrome finish at the bottom of that bumper. Now taking a look at the design of the Palisade, I'll be honest, this definitely looks better in person. I wasn't really a fan of it when I first saw it but it is really sleek and it looks really premium, especially with these LED lights. Uh, leave your comments below. Do you prefer this or the Telluride? So this color is called Moonlight Cloud. Now, when I first heard that, I thought it was gonna be a lighter color, but it's actually really dark. It looks black sometimes, but it's actually kind of like a dark navy and it's, it looks really nice and some lighting as well, like uh, direct sunlight. You can definitely see the blue. The wheels on the Palisade are gonna vary. You'll get 18 inch wheels on the SE and SEL, but you'll get these 20 inch wheels that are pretty bright on this limited trim. Those are optional on the SEL. Those have 245 50 series tires. Take a look at these mirrors right here. So you'll get heated body color mirrors standard on every trim. The SEL will give you these LED turn signals, SEL and limited. I like how it actually wraps around that mirror. You can see it on the side right there as well. We have blind spot indicators in here as well. Uh, it's not automatic dimming though, and there's no power folding function like there is on the Telluride. But at night, they actually give you approach lighting, which is pretty cool on the limited trim. Now on the side of the vehicle, you'll get body color door handles on the SE trim, and then satin chrome here and on the SEL trim. So it really stands out. You've kind of got that same trim up by the windows. You have another trim piece down there at the bottom. So you have a, a satin chrome, kind of a, a luxurious look on the side of the Palisade. Dimensionally, it's 196 inches long. And part of that, I think, is the fact that it doesn't actually really have a rear bumper. And they did an excellent job of space with this vehicle. It's smaller than some of its competitors, but offers more room inside than some competitors. Ground clearance is also at a decent 7.9 inches. And then as we come take a look at the rear end, it's a unique design back here as well, especially with the taillights. These are also full LED, and it even says full LED right there. Again, I have a night video kind of showing these off. It's got that similar kind of up and down design. The turn signal is integrated into that. And then you can't really see it right now, but you see this white piece? There's actually light inside of there. That's accent lighting, and you get uh, premium accent lighting like that on the limited trim. And it really looks pretty neat at night. Um, I still am not really a huge fan of 
the rear design of the Palisade, but it still looks pretty nice, can, all things considered, and for a big SUV. Those LED taillights, by the way, are standard on the Limited and optional on the SEL. We even get that little chrome piece on the bottom. We've got parking sensors here. And then you got this dual tip exhaust down there as well. Hyundai on the SEL and Limited trim, you can get this smart gate where it actually will just lift up if you stand here. And that's actually optional on the SEL, standard on this Limited trim. So you don't have to actually kick your foot or wave or do anything. You can just stand here and you can turn that off or on. And the Palisade is no slouch in the cargo department. It can have 18 cubic feet behind the third row, plenty for some grocery bags and some luggage, and then fold those down, you'll get 45.6 cubic feet behind the second row. And then when you fold the second row down, you've got 86.4 cubic feet. Definitely a lot of space, especially considering the dimensions of this vehicle. Now let me give you a closer look at this rear cargo area. So first of all, right up above, we've got a button and a grab handle, and this is a height adjustable tailgate. Now right behind this third row, there's a decent amount of space, and that's not always the case in these three row crossovers, but you can fit a pretty good amount of stuff right here. I threw a lot of groceries back here. You've got a tie down on each side, a little grocery bag hook there as well, a spot for a tonneau cover. And then when we look over to the left, we've got a 12 volt power outlet, always good to see. And then you get power folding seats standard on every trim. And that's the third and the second row right here. And you can do each seat individually. So uh, let's go ahead and do this left one. You don't have to hold the button or anything either. It will just automatically go. And if that headrest is up, you push the button, it will automatically fold. And then it gives you a really nice flat area back here, which is awesome. The second row can also be lowered down with just the push of a button and that is pretty fast. So really nice large area, definitely practical and useful. And you've kind of got a little bit of storage cubbies um, and charging ports for that third row. And I'll show you that in a little bit. Now the cool part is that you can raise that back up power, but you can't do the second row. You have to do that manually. And then underneath of here, you've got a really good size storage bin that's actually fairly deep. You have your jack kit inside of there and you can lift this up to get access to your spare tire. But that's a really nice large bin down there. The Palisade gives you their smart key with push button start on every trim except the base. And you can see we even have remote start on here, which I don't believe the Telluride did on the key fob. We have the Blue Link app where you can control things with the app. This back part is actually rubber, which is kind of nice. Hopefully it holds up over time. So the way this works is you've got, you don't have a sensor behind here or anything. You just have this button to lock it and then this button to unlock it. And the mirror will flash. On the SEL and Limited, you'll get door handles that are illuminated for welcome lights. And then the Limited will actually give you puddle lights from the mirror down on the ground, which is pretty cool. Now hopping into the Palisade is really easy. Although it is a pretty big vehicle, it does not really ride that high. So it's a pretty easy slide in. So starting out on the base SE, you'll get cloth seats that are six way manual, no lumbar support. The SEL is where you'll definitely get some more features. You'll get eight way power seats. They're still cloth, but you'll get two way lumbar support. Those seats will be heated no matter what, and you can option up to get leather seats with memory settings. You can also option up to get an eight-way power passenger seat. Then once you get to the limited trim, which we have right here, you get Napa leather seats that actually give you four-way lumbar support, even thigh extension for the driver. They're gonna be heated, ventilated, and they're gonna have two positions for memory settings. These seats are really nice. They have a uh, perforation in them, of course, for the ventilation. Uh, they've got some nice kind of diamond pattern on them. They've got good bolstering around the sides. It's nice that you can adjust the thigh cushions. The thigh bolstering is good. Overall, these seats are pretty nice. Now I'm five foot nine, easy for me to fit in here, but if you are over six foot, you should still have a pretty good uh, amount of headroom. I have the seat lifted up a little bit and there's really quite a bit of movement with the seat. For my shoulders and my legs, there's a good amount of room in here. The center console is fairly large, but my knee has been okay resting up against it. You'll get a leather steering wheel on the SEL and the limited trim. It's manual adjustable on every trim. There's no uh, power adjustment, but when you turn the car on, you can have the seat do the easy entrance exit system to where the seat can actually back up for you when you get out. And to top it off, Optional on the SEL, you can make this steering wheel heated, and that's standard on our limited trim. And the entire steering wheel is heated, which is wonderful. Now the interior of the Palisade is definitely a modern look. It's really kind of cool how everything is put together. It's a unique style, but it, everything works really well, and it's definitely functional in here. 
I also like how it differentiates itself from the Telluride in certain ways. So let's take a deep dive with the interior features. Up top here, this is soft touch. You've actually got a pretty nice grab handle here. Your memory settings are on the door. This pattern right here is pretty cool. It's, uh, I'm not sure if this is real or not, but it's still a pretty cool idea. It is soft as well. You've got a nice soft armrest with a decent amount of padding. I really love this grab handle. It does have a bottom so you can stick your phone or even keys in there and it's really large. Gives it a substantial feel. Got this pretty cool looking speaker grill, but only the front two windows are the one touch automatic up down. There's not a lot of storage in the door pocket for stuff, but my bottle does fit with a tight fit. We have a dark headliner and look, this is even like a soft material. It's almost like a suede, kind of like a microfibery type feel. We have push button start and there's even a nice little ring around that. And then that lights up our interior section right here. I'm a fan of this steering wheel. It is very comfortable to hold on to. You've kind of got a perforated section on the sides. The entire wheel is heated and it gets really warm. You've even got some paddle shifters on each side. Got nice, easy to use buttons for cruise control, radio, voice, all of that, and a small slot in the middle. We have our rain sensing wipers on that stock right there. Just to the side of the steering wheel, we have interior illumination. You can change your brightness, your blind spot indicator, lane keeping system, traction control, open up your lift gate, and your parking brake. Now standard on the other trims, you will get a smaller display um, the SEL can option up for a 7 inch display and then our top limited gives us this entire 12.3 inch digital display. I like the way this looks but you'll see the speedometers on the left and the tachometers on the right and the tachometer goes counterclockwise and that's just been messing with me. Um, there's not as much customization with this screen as I was hoping for. Uh, you can control things in the middle there. You can see a decent amount of information and then you can press the button on the steering wheel and scroll through all of this down below. Uh, we can kind of change our view a little bit on here using the steering wheel. So you can see kind of your safety system right there uh, and then scroll through your information on the right there inside of the tachometer. And then you've got a compass, but there's no uh, navigation on here and no audio, which is kind of interesting and scrolling through trip computers and whatnot is, is a little interesting. So just a small complaint, but it does look nice and it functions well. And then right up above, we have a head up display, which is exclusive to this limited trim. It can show your lanes, your speed, uh, even any road sign or uh, speed limit signs um, and your blind spot indicators as well, if there's anybody there. And one really cool function exclusive to the limited trim is the blind spot monitor. So take a look at that. You turn your blinker on, and then depending on which side you're going, oh shoot, there's my tripod. I'm glad I didn't run that over. Uh, but you can see a camera, so you can see a vehicle in the lane next to you kind of as a third check, and you still get the blind spot indicators in the mirror. And speaking of blind spots, I wanna give you an, a look at visibility. These front pillars are pretty small, which is good. And the back window's a decent size. The far back windows, are not too bad. The visibility really isn't too bad in here compared to some other vehicles. And then as we move across here, this is all sort of connected with the instrument panel and this screen right here. So on the lower trims, you'll get an eight inch screen, the SE and the SEL, but we've got the 10 and a quarter inch screen integrated into the dash right here. And I'm not a real big fan of this like piano shiny black, but it's really not a big deal up there. So Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are standard on every trim. So is the rear seat quiet mode, which I'll show you in a second. This screen is standard on our limited trim, uh, but optional on the SEL. So you can still get this on the SEL. You'll get navigation, HD radio, Sirius XM, and the limited trim gives us a 12 speaker, 630 watt Harman Kardon system. Now let me give you a quick audio clip of just a non-copyright song, uh, a little bit of highs, a little bit of lows, some bass, and uh, this does sound like a good system to me. I'm no expert on audio, but it sounds good with no vibrations in here. This is all really easy to use. You can see our home screen right here. This can be customized as well with uh, three different views. You can move over. You have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto going, that's easy to use as well. Everything, in my opinion, is laid out pretty well. So driver talk, 
you can hit driver talk and then it's going to have um it's going to pick up your voice and relay it through the rear speakers and you might be able to hear an echo right now that's optional on the SEL standard on our limited trim and then you have quiet mode which if you turn that on as you can see the radio is only going to be played in the front and then only on the limited trim is the surround view monitor so let me go ahead and put it in gear and then I'll hit the surround view monitor. Oops, there we go. So right now I have it in drive so I can see in front of me. You can see right there uh, the vehicle and its projected lines. If I go ahead and put it in reverse, I've got projected lines in the back. You can customize this as well and you can see a couple different spots. So you can see that, you can change the brightness, see next to the vehicle. So parking is a breeze in here. And there's actually on the limited trim only 64 different colors of ambient lighting. So if I go ahead and move over, you can see some of that lighting right there, that purple running up underneath of there. And there's some kind of underneath of the center console as well. So I have a night video displaying all of that and it looks pretty cool. And as we go down here, we've got a couple vents. You've got all these buttons laid out really well. Physical volume knob, easy shortcut buttons for your radio. So you still have some physical buttons here, physical tuning knob as well. And then down here, uh, it's kind of an interesting layout with our climate control. The base SE is going to give you just regular manual controls, and then the rest of them will give you this dual zone. And this is easy to use. You can see your fan speed. You're going to have it on automatic, synced, and whatnot. The most interesting thing up here is this shifter. So park, reverse, neutral, drive. It's in a good spot from where your hand rests uh, right here, so it's easy to use. Um, you know, some of you will probably prefer a physical shifter, but you have your brake hold right here, your heated ventilated seats, your heated steering wheel. Those are all three tier and they all work really well. Um, auto stop start reverts to being on and this uh, 360 camera button reverts to being off, which is kind of interesting. Um, and then this is our drive mode. So smart mode uh, and I'll go through the drive mode in our test drive. Uh, you got uh, smart, sport, comfort, eco, snow, and then lock to uh, lock the front and the back to, to lock your center differential. And when we go through those, things will change on here as you can see red right there. Uh, and then when we go to comfort, it's basically what smart mode is when you're just driving normal, eco mode, and then even snow mode. Now one cool thing is down below the center console, you can see a little bit of that purple lighting first of all got a really large bin you've got an ace or a 12 volt power outlet and a usb port and a good spot for uh some big storage items like i can throw my camera down there my wife can put her purse down there and then check out these bottle holders so first of all you can have this whole thing covered up or you can get that out of the way got a usb port right there this is a wireless charging pad and it actually goes back a decent ways and then check out these cup holders so first of all you can put that down and well most time that works but that little arm actually like slides out which is interesting and then you can just slide it back in you know i it's kind of cool because it gives you a big area but i would be nervous if these would break then as we go back here we have a 12 volt power outlet and a usb port in there it's really dark and then a movable tray right there which is pretty cool so a nice big storage area this glove box is not lockable but it is illuminated uh, it's not soft touch or anything like that inside, but you kind of have some unique trim running across there. This piece on the dash is also soft. Right up above, you've got an automatic dimming rear view mirror, and there are garage controls on here. Um, you don't get a, a frameless mirror. And another thing is we get a conversation mirror up here, but you don't get a sunglass holder, which is a little bit of a bummer. And then you can open up your twin panel roof here, or not twin panel, that's Ford, but it's basically the same thing. You've got a separate sunroof back there over those passengers, which is pretty cool. And then you have this. So I think I'd prefer just a huge panoramic roof, but it's nice to still have that option. That roof is standard on the Limited. Otherwise, the regular sunroof is optional on the SEL. This visor is pretty large. You've got a nice light right there, and the entire visor will slide out. The Palisade can be had in an 8-passenger or 7-passenger configuration. The 8-passenger will be standard on the SE, optional on the SEL, and the 7-passenger is standard on the SEL and limited. You can't get this top limited trim with a bench seat. You can only get it with the captain's chairs. 
but it's still a really nice place to be. So with these captain's chairs, you've got this armrest right here. These seats can scoot forward and backwards quite a ways. They can also recline quite a ways, so you can really get comfortable here, especially with this uh, second sunroof back there. Now let's take a closer look at the second row. So first of all, it's really cool that you have this. This is great for kids or uh, anybody in the back seat to block the sun. On top of the door here, we still get nice soft material right here. You've got the same pattern on the door, good soft uh, armrest and grab handle. And check this out, you've got a smaller bottle holder and a larger bottle holder, and that just makes me real happy. Then you have a little bottle holder down below as well. Now sitting behind myself, you can see just how much knee space I have and how much foot space. There is a lot. There's a lot of room for your feet under here as well, so you can be really comfortable without my knees being really high off the ground. These seats can also scoot forward, so that's its furthest most position that locks, and I can still sit here comfortably, and I'll show you what it's like in the third row behind this and with the seat back. These seats back here still look really nice. They have the same pattern and perforations that you get on the front. One thing that I really like is the armrest right here. That is nice, it just doesn't ratchet. And then you'll notice that you have a USB port right there. You have a USB port right here. So you've got USB ports kind of out of the way. Plus you've got a three prong outlet and a 12 volt power outlet. And you've got your own climate control. This is automatic. So you can control your temperature, have it on automatic. And then our backseat passengers even get ventilated seats in addition to heated outboard seats. So you hardly ever see ventilated seats in the second row, even on some luxury vehicles. The heated seats are optional on the SEL and standard on the Limited, and then the ventilated seats are standard on our Limited only. You'll notice that you have a seat back pocket on both sides, which is good. The automatic AC controls are on the top two trims. The base just gets manual AC back here. Those AC vents are up above each passenger. We even get LED lighting back here in the second row. And we've got our own little sunroof for just the second and third row passengers. And it goes back a decent ways, it's just not one big panoramic roof, but still, at least you get a sunroof back here. That three prong outlet is standard on our top trim and optional on the SEL, and the USB ports are standard on every trim. Getting into the third row is still pretty easy. You've even got an actual platform to step in or to give you a little bit better access to the roof rack. So there are a couple different ways. One, you can push this button, or you can push this button. I'll just push that. And look at that, it just slides out of the way on its own. Not only does it fold, but actually slides and gives you a decent space to get in. Now take a look at this. So I can sit here, my knees are pressing into the back of the seat, but I can still actually sit here. And this is with the seat all the way back. This third row has a middle seat, so someone could sit here and kind of stretch their legs if they wanted. And then I have this seat all the way forward and I could sit there behind myself and still be okay. So if I have that back here, you can see how much more knee space I have. It's just that the seat bottom is kind of low, so that's the only complaint. But for a three row crossover, this is really good. Each side also still gets overhead AC vents. Our top limited, of course, gives us a USB port on each side, but the SEL can get that optional. And check this out, you can even recline your seat with this manual power, or the power button, and you got a couple cup holders on both sides. And I can sit back here without my head actually touching. I can feel my hair touch a little bit, but if I even recline a little bit, most of the time I wouldn't be able to sit here with it reclined, but I can sit here reclined and it's actually pretty comfortable. Considering this is 196 inches long and there's this much room inside of here, that's fantastic. And it'll be super easy for your passengers to get out. If you have kids, press that button and there you go. Now as we take a look at the powertrain of the Hyundai Palisade, there's really only one thing that I don't like about it, I'll tell you at the end here. So first of all, it's a direct injected 3.8 liter V6, it's going to give you 291 horsepower, 262 pound-feet of torque, not bad, average numbers, paired with an 8-speed automatic transmission. Front wheel drive is standard, but all wheel drive is optional on every trim. And you can tell 5,000 pounds. Miles per gallon is the weakness probably here with front wheel drive being rated at 19 city, 26 highway, and all wheel drive being rated at 19 city, 24 highway, and 21 combined, which is a couple miles per gallon, a few miles per gallon less than some of the competitors. Now the thing I don't like is that it is direct injected only, and there are some issues that can come with that, no guarantees, but I'd like to see direct and port, or just even port injected, especially considering the fact that it's not really all that efficient. 
One of the nice things though is the warranty. So first of all, you've got a five year, 60,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty, and then you've got a 10 year, 100,000 mile powertrain warranty. Now, of course, you've got to do your maintenance and all that, but it's still nice to have. All right, everyone, we are on the test drive in the 2020 Hyundai Palisade. And I'm gonna go through a couple of the drive modes, tell you what it's like to live with the Palisade and uh, get on it a couple times, how it handles, all of that. So be sure to stay tuned. Now my first impression right off the bat with the Palisade is that it just feels like a comfortable vehicle. It's, it's not harsh, it's not loud, it's comfortable, it's quiet, and it's just a really easy vehicle to drive. Even though it is a bigger vehicle, it's still not as big as some competitors like the Ford Explorer, uh, Chevy Traverse. Um, it's, it's very manageable, especially when you've got that 360 camera on the screen there. Now, I apologize, it is a little off and on rainy, uh, but maybe you'll get to see how the rain sensing wipers work. Let's go ahead and get on it. And it's definitely a smooth powertrain. It's pretty seamless going through the gears. And that was in smart mode. Um, smart mode is something I really like about this actually. So it basically kind of keeps you in comfort mode, but it can shift into sport mode as needed. If it tells and can sense that you are needing more throttle, it'll give it to you. The steering feel on the Palisade it's probably about right in the middle. It's not heavy at all. It's pretty easy to move, but it's not super light where it's just, you know, almost no feedback whatsoever. It's easy to put it where you want to put it. You know, for a family SUV, three row SUV, this is about exactly how I would want it. Um, it's not sporty at all by any means. In fact, there's a little bit of, a little more body movement in here than I would like. Um, I will talk about that on corners, but especially like coming to a stop or accelerating if it's a little faster than normal You get some squat in here and you get some dive in here. So it's just more body movement It's kind of a floatier suspension, but just a small complaint Now I've slowed down a little bit and if I'm just gonna give it a little bit of throttle from 35 The throttle response isn't great most of the time it changes in sport mode and that's one thing I complained about with the Telluride, especially taking off from a stop. It's, it does not want to go. You have to put more, pe more pedal into it in order to get it to move. But once you put it down and it picks a gear, it goes. And there's no fuss, it's no hard shifts or anything like that. This transmission has really been quite smooth. I've been happy with it. It's been pretty much unobtrusive almost don't even notice it sometimes uh, occasionally as I'm slowing down and then if I have to accelerate as I'm slowing down it there's a little bit of a question mark on what it wants to do but for the most part it does really well if I go ahead and get on the brakes the brake pedal feel is nice this feels great for a big vehicle for as big as it is now I just put it in sport mode the graphics in front of us will change and on there seemed to let us rev it out a little more and it's still holding the rpms a decent amount so if we go ahead and get on it some more it's a little more responsive and this power plant is sufficient for being a 3.8 liter i'd maybe expect a little bit more power but it's good enough now there's there's a little bit of body roll around here it's not terrible though it's really not that bad and pretty responsive coming out of that corner and go ahead and put it back in smart mode. So I'm gonna complain about the body lean because there's not much to complain about in here. The ride comfort in the Palisade is probably one of its strong suits. Um, there's really no harshness in here at all. Even though we have big wheels and skinnier tires uh, for this limited trim, it's still comfortable, it's composed, it's just easy to live with. Now, comparing it to the Telluride with ride comfort, I think this is maybe a little bit softer, just from a distant memory, but this also has a little bit more of a floaty feel to it. That's something that I don't like. It's not as bad as some vehicles, but it's just a little floaty sometimes when you really get on some 
broken pavement, it's kind of like you just don't feel quite so planted. Now, I don't have a full demo of the uh, radar cruise and lane keeping system and stuff in here, but this has a very advanced system. So um, I have a video on the Telluride if you want to see that. I'll put that in the description below. It works the same way. But this is a very advanced uh, system. It works very well to keep you in your lane, lane centering. There's highway drive assist where it can actually even change the speed depending on the speed limit for you. And it shows you your speed limit on the head up display as well. It has just been fantastic. It's pretty easy and seamless. The radar cruise or the smart cruise will even bring you down to a stop. Now acceleration from a stop, you have to definitely get on it a little more. But like I said, once you give it some pedal, it goes. And there's some powertrain noise in here, but it's not a lot. Okay, so now I'm on the road uh, where I always talk about some of the noise inside of here. When you're at high speeds, there's a little bit of wind noise that seeps in. It's noticeable, but it's really not bad at all. It's not like loud, it's just that you can tell it's there. These windows are laminated, which is nice. This front window, the windshield is also laminated. And my decibel ratings for this were excellent. So there's, there is tire noise, there is wind noise, but it's at a very low level. The noise is great. On another note though, um, I'm in Texas outside of Dallas and one thing is that we don't really get cold much uh, not compared to what cold really is but some mornings when it was in the 30s or right around freezing the interior kind of creaked a little bit it's almost like this entire dash and center console was like trying to move or something and that's just made me a little nervous but I haven't had any rattles or anything like that so I'm just kind of curious about that if any of you have experienced that just for fun, I'm gonna put it in sport mode one more time. Oh, and there's a built-in radar detector. No, I'm just kidding, that's part of the lane system. But uh, I have not been able to drive this with m multiple people in here. I've had one other person and a baby um, so with this power plant and the size of the vehicle, I'm curious if it feels underpowered at all at times So please comment below if you have that experience But I think this engine will be more than enough for most people. I just wish it was a little more efficient now as far as living with this every day I've enjoyed this gauge cluster for the most part. It's a little wonky with the positioning there, but Everything is practical easy to use the parking. This is really easy um, Visibility out of here is pretty good considering the size of the vehicle and what it is. I love the heated steering wheel. There's just, it's just a good fit and finish for the most part and just superb value with features that you get. So to wrap things up on the 2020 Hyundai Palisade, I have been very impressed with this vehicle and when you look at everything else in the class and the prices that those come at, this is super competitive. This is probably the best value you can get for a brand new three row SUV, especially for under $50,000. Like I said in the beginning, this is basically a luxury vehicle with the Hyundai badge and you really can't go wrong with this. And like I told you, this or the Kia Telluride, I had that last summer, I would take the Kia Telluride. To me, the looks of the Telluride are something I like better. Uh, I just, I like a lot about this Palisade, but I just have to go with the Telluride. So leave your comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out some of these other videos. Be sure to check out the night video I have of this as well. Have a great rest of your day.